Good afternoon, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church, and I'm here in our nave of our church here in Paducah, Kentucky, as we begin and celebrate uh, this afternoon on this 18th day of June. Today we are celebrating the commemoration and uh, festival day of Bernard Mozecki. He was an amazing missionary of uh, near Zimbabwe about the, in the 20th century. Tell you a little bit more about him in just a few moments. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence as we celebrate this day with our God. We are on page 103 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 103. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures begin with our, our psalm, Psalm 116 found on page 759 in your Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 116, also found in your Holy Scriptures. We'll be reading a portion of Psalm 116 this afternoon, verses 1 through 6. Please, 1 through 8, excuse me, verses 1 through 8. Please join me in reading these out loud or in the silence of your own meditation. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue with a passage from the book of Revelations, from John, chapter 7, verses 13 through 17. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was mentioning today, and with these beautiful scriptures that we have been reflecting on just momently, uh, moments ago, we can see why this day is celebrated uh, as a way to remind ourselves of Bernard Maseki. He was born in uh, Portuguese East Africa at that time, uh, Mozambique at that period of time, in 1861. When he was 12 years old, he traveled home to Cape Town, South Africa, where then for the next 10 years, he worked and labored there in the slums of Cape Town. You know, the disastrous living that it was in those periods of time with the temptation of uh, drinking and corruption, of gang warfare, etc. In these times, he was uh, 
picked by uh, a, one, a teacher from the Society of the St. John the Evangelist, also known as the Crowley Fathers at that period of time. He became a Christian on March 9th, 1886. And besides all those fundamental piece, uh, pieces of European schooling, his English and French and High Dutch uh, languages were exquisite, along with his African dialects. It was because of this that his Anglican teachers and the church sought him out as a person to help them with the missionary work. After he graduated from uh, school, he was with Bishop uh, Bruce Knight, or Knight Bruce, excuse me, and went to uh, Maziland in the tribal areas uh, which now were southern Rhodesia, now called Zimbabwe. He was helped as a lay catechist. In 1891, the bishop assigned him to a little town uh, near uh, Mungwangwe uh, with the chief priests that were there in that area. The Anglican church was helping to plant a church there. And it was because of Bernard Muzaki uh, that a missionary uh, and mission work of a catechist and a school and church began to flourish. He, uh, it was there that in a plateau and a little clearing near a group of trees, that were sacred to the native people of that period uh, of the Mushana uh, tribal community, that the spirits there were thought of as being sacred. Bernard's uh, keen sense of awareness of the culture at that time made that very sacred, but also under had the permission from the chief of the tribe to build a missionary in that area. When he started to carve crosses on the, uh, on the wood of those uh, trees, he upset the shamans of that period and they took uh, great offense to it. It was in, on this date, on June, 8, 9, June 18th in 8, 1896, that Bernard uh, was killed uh, by a spear. And it was there that his wife and several uh, people who uh, were neighbors of that area uh, and his, uh, where he died saw a great light on top of the hill near those groves of trees. It was there, and to this day, a great festival, a Christian festival by Anglicans and Christians alike in uh, Zimbabwe are, are still celebrated today. Today, in, when we listen to these scriptures from uh, John's recollection of the re Revelation, you know, the idea of those marked by the sign of faith who have been martyred for the faith community have a great place in God's heavenly kingdom. It was there that this vision from John's recollection is given to us. We also use these same passage uh, for the celebration of all souls and the festival of and feast day of all saints. How is it in your life, my life? Do we see our work at, at work of passing on the Christian faith? Yesterday I was spending time with our youth at uh, Holiday World. I think in those ways, uh, our youth pastor Hannah Minton and myself uh, and all parents are making uh, landmark uh, places to plant the seeds of faith in our children, to know that they can have a good time, but also in prayer and to help ask God for the right direction in all that we do. Planting seeds of faith is important for all of us. Being confirmed in the faith is just as important. Let us strive to celebrate and to pass our faith on to others this week and this coming weekend. For all those dads who are celebrating Father's Day this coming weekend on Sunday, happy Father's Day weekend to you all. Amen. We continue our prayers now and turning to page 106 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 106. Let us ask the Lord for forgiveness in those times when we haven't been pleasant to each other or shaming ourselves in the same way. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together, my sisters and brothers, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us 
Let us use the Lord's Prayer in the traditional version on the left column on page 106. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this day. Almighty and everlasting God, who kindled the flame of your love in the heart of your holy martyr, Bernard Maseki, grant that unto us, your servants, a like faith and power of love, that we who rejoice in his triumph may profit by his example, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And as we now, we lift up our prayers to those who could, uh, are with us, let us use prayers of the people, form three, found on page 387. Prayers of the people, form three. We especially pray for the family of the uh, James uh, Ingram, excuse me, Jane, James Langstaff, who died in, uh, and drowned in our river here in the Ohio. This uh, beautiful stained glass window uh, behind me is the wood of the cross, and I thought it would be appropriate for today as we celebrate Bernard Masecki's uh, commemoration day. Let us offer our prayers. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all those who, hold the, who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that, they may be, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We pray in thanksgiving, God, for this beautiful day and for all those who celebrated their birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. We especially pray for uh, Elise Moorhead and for Jenny Ann Culthorpe. We pray for Sherry and John Shadle, who celebrated their wedding anniversary uh, this past Sunday. We also pray, Lord, in thanksgiving for all those who we commemorate and who have given their lives for the faith and martyred. We thank you, Lord, for the, those who serve us in our first responders, our police officers and fire people, and for all those who help make uh, our lives becoming more normal uh, this day happen, especially our doctors and nurses and our scientists who have given us and blessed this, the vaccine that has been helping us get back to normal. We pray, Lord, in thanksgiving for all of those who are special and blessings in our lives. That they may be, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Especially pray for over the 200 people who are infected by the coronavirus here in our commonwealth, our state. And for all those around the world who are still being infected and where vaccinations are not able to happen as quickly as we are having. We pray, Lord, for, that we may hold life sacred and that we may help each other become vaccinated and also to pass that on to other people, and especially in India and other countries where there's been great outbreaks, and especially throughout Africa, in African nations in that continent. We pray, Lord, for those who are ill today, who are suffering because of physical or behavioral health issues, we pray for Bill Powers, who's been hospitalized. We pray, Lord, for those who are recovering from injuries, especially Barbara Evans and Reverend uh, uh, Nick Yeager. We pray for those suffering from uh, cancer at this time and receiving treatments, especially for Sherry Ulick, my sister-in-law, for Reverend Libby Wade, for Reverend Dorothy Hartsog, Kelly Curtis Walker, for Tommy, for George Chalk, for Sam Whitest, 
Patty, for Phil and Rita. We pray, Lord, and lift up all those who are also uh, be, uh, receiving other treatments for other ailments. We pray for, uh, again, my, sis, my, su my wife, Susie, who is uh, still receiving treatments for her frozen shoulder, for Reverend John Allen, Teresa w Al Wilson, Liz Story, for Paul Meisinger, Linda Harris, for, Bar uh, for Brandon Moss, for Rob, uh, Nicholas Holland's dad. And we pray for all expectant moms, especially Emily Black, uh, Megan, and Hannah Ulick, and for all those who are delivering a baby today. We give thanks, Lord, and give them the right uh, medical treatments, and for all those who need treatments for medical or behavioral health issues, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, we pause now and ask you, Lord, to be with all those who have passed away, especially those from COVID-19 and those three people who died uh, yesterday because of this virus here in our own commonwealth. We pray, Lord, especially for Sue Patton, who passed away uh, this week, and J the mother of Jim Patton, and for all his family as they mourn the loss of their dear mom, and for their late uh, dad, Harry, who passed away last year. We ask you, Lord, to be with them in this time of grief, and all of us who have known grief at this past year and this week. May we pause now and remember these beautiful souls. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. And those inscriptions you put online at this time, may we pray and lift up all the inscriptions in our book of prayerful intentions. Help us, O oh Lord, to know your holy presence in our life this day, and especially for all dads, as we remember them, both past and present. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I hope you have a beautiful day and enjoy this weekend, and especially if you're a dad or a father figure. God bless you, and I thank you, for, especially for my dad, Delbert. Have a great weekend. Please join us this Sunday at 10 a.m. as we'll be streaming our live uh, Eucharistic service uh, this Sunday at 10 a.m. And if you're in town, please join us in person where we are celebrating in-person services. Have a great weekend and may God bless you. And remember, God loves each and every one of you. And so do I. Blessings to your day.